Right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Carl, Carl Lehman. Um, I'm from Dream It, Planet, Live It, and I'm joined this afternoon on this beautiful, sunny Devon afternoon here. Well, I'm in Devon, but Yvonne isn't by Yvonne Hardiman. Say hello, Yvonne. Hi, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> A very warm welcome to you. Thank you and, very much. Uh, really looking forward to hear uh, what what you've got to say. Um, so for, for, for people who are just curious as to kind of what Yvonne does, well, she's the managing director of an organisation called Two Pearl Row. Um, she is a HR specialist. Would that be a great way to kind of describe you, Yvonne? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So she's a chartered member um, of CIPD, which is the, if you like, I guess the gold standard of, of dealing with kind of HR type of things. Would that be fair assessment? Yeah, it's a professional body that governs the um, HR profession. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And you've got an MA in management. I've been doing a bit of research I about do. you as well. I do, indeed. Get you. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, uh, Yvonne is one of the first non-lawyer partners to become a partner in a, in a UK law firm. Is that right? That's right. Yes, I became um, a, a partner in a, um, a legal 500 firm. Um, back in, I can't remember what year it was now, but um, when, when they first changed the, the laws so that non-lawyer part non-lawyers could actually become partners in law firms. Yeah. Well, well done you. That, that That's an amazing <laughs> achievement and uh, uh, one one you should be duly proud of. But um, just for the viewers, um, I, I've known Yvonne for a, a good while now, probably sort of more than sort of 12 months. Uh, we're part of a kind of group that meets up on a regular basis together. And I've just been really impressed with um Yvonne's approach to HR and that's you know really you know on, on the forefront of a lot of business owner minds at the moment with with everything that's going on in the world um but you know apart from trying to navigating legal landmines the thing that's really impressed me with you Yvonne is is the kind of compassion that you've had when we when we talk about people and we talk about cases um, and, and your insight into, into the kind of grieving process of like what, what somebody might be going through um, and having a life after redundancy. So um, without me waffling on any more about you, <laughs> tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do for people exactly. Um, so, yeah, as, as you've said, I'm an HR consultant. I tend to work with small to medium sized businesses and I can help them with um, every aspect of HR. But um, as you say, I... I kind of get to know their employees, get to know what um, motivates them. So I can help the managers um, motivate them and manage them and um, get the most out of the business. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm just curious. I mean, obviously, you know, we're going through a pandemic at the moment. And, you know, how, how has that affected the work that you, you do with people? Are, are employers finding it difficult? And if so, what are the challenges that they're, they're finding? I think one of the main challenges is having to work remotely right. and especially for managers having to manage people remotely and to um, kind of replicate everything that you would normally do in an office, uh, but having to do that on a screen. Yeah. Um, so it's obviously you can't see, you can't have those kind of, um, get have the same kind of interactions that you would do if you were just sitting in an office and having a chat, but it's kind of replicating that environment and um and trying to manage people to achieve their objectives and things when you're all in a different, um, you know, different houses, different buildings, yeah. um, that's quite a challenge. So, so how, how are you going about that? I mean, obviously, you know, we're, we're in a place in time at the moment where, you know, there are so many people working from home. You know, what, what are the strategies? What are the tips that people can take away from in terms of helping manage their teams in, in more productive ways, I guess? Yeah, I think the main thing is it always comes down to communication and um, and just be mindful that um, every day, uh, you know, even every hour is not um, too much to be communicating with people. Right. But just touching with base with people on a daily basis. Yeah. Just to catch up with, you know, have your team meetings. We've got all this technology now, you know, we've got Teams, we've got Zoom. Yeah. Um, so you can replicate your team meetings every day. You can have a catch up every morning. You know, where are we all with everything? Catch up throughout the day to see what people are, just so that people don't feel so isolated and, and they also feel supported. 
because it's very hard if you're kind of on your own at home and you're not kind of used to working in that environment at all. And, um, you know, suddenly you've been thrown into this situation where you're, you're at home on your own. Yeah. And if you're struggling, you might not find it that easy to kind of pick up the phone or, or have a video call with somebody. So it's really down to the managers to be more proactive in communicating with their staff. And it's something that, um, are, you, are you finding that people are, are good at doing that just naturally? Are they making the effort or is um, it a learning Some skill? people are very good at it and have adapted to it. And other people are, I think, are, are struggling, right? you know, quite badly. Yeah. Um, I'm really missing that interaction with people. I think it's really important. I mean, we, we in my team here, I mean, we're quite a small select team, but we uh, we have a team meeting every every Monday um, morning stroke lunchtime. Um, and, you know, that's where we talk about sort of details of the business and the week ahead and things we need to kind of catch up on all the rest of it. Um, but um, I don't know if you've ever come across a, a, an app called Voxer. So it's just like a walkie talkie app that you have on your mobile phone. Um, and we use it as like a little way of communicating with one another. Um, so if we don't want to, you, you, we all get so many emails, don't we, these days? It's yeah, just a, yeah. a phenomenal sort of, so we, we actually sort of send little messages in a secure uh, way um, using this app called Voxer. And uh, it's really, really quite cool because you can just relay messages backwards and forwards. But it is known that sometimes I will just go to my practice manager, typically, because she's the lady that I have most contact with. I'll go, Dawn. I just want to tell you this joke and you know I'll, I'll then dispense this joke and she'll, she'll message me about saying you know you're just mad which, which is a good thing you know because it just puts a <laughs> smile on on her face and I think in these times when we are working remotely anything you can do um, to impart a bit of energy a bit of fun a bit of humor and help people know that you actually care about them um, yeah. is, is really important. Yeah I completely agree I mean I use the Teams app quite a lot Okay. And that's very similar that you can just, you know, you've got it on your phone all the time. You can just message somebody quite yeah. quickly. You can call them. You use it, you know, for, for voice calls. You can use it for video calls. And I think all of this technology, we have to use it to sort of just help pe people um, communicate more regularly during the day. Okay. So, I mean, I, I work a lot with business owners. So typically they're, they're, they're small, medium sized sort of businesses. And when I'm working with the board, typically that's where I work. The, the one thing I tend to find again and again is that you know, the business owner will, will be split, you know, depending on the personality type they are between um, actually, you know, their team being a real investment in, in, in their business and actually is empowering them to get where they want to be. And those people think, oh, they bring all the headaches, you know, all the drama because I've got to manage all of these people. And um, what, what, what's your comments on that? I mean, is it down to their procedures? Is it down to their management style? I'm just curious. Yeah, I think it's down to management style. Um, so um, there's a book that I've read quite recently and it talks about the leader leader style or the leader follower style okay and um the leader leader style is where you make everyone in the business a leader right um so that relies on you um making sure that they've got all the knowledge that they need to to be empowered as they possibly can be for the role that they're doing yeah and so it's giving them more control over their day more control over the the day-to-day -day decisions about their particular role okay um, rather than um you know telling them what to do yeah um so it's kind of enabling people and i think the people that um, don't bring people along with them are probably more the leader follower style right. than the leader leader style yeah. where everybody is in charge of what they do on a day-to-day -day basis obviously the strategic decisions and things have to be made yeah. But it does um, come down to trust. So you need a very high level of trust to be able to be able to enact that style at every level. Because typically, what managers will say is, "I can't let them. I can't let them have that amount of control <laughs> over their daily working. You know, their working day." Yeah. Um, but the reason they 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 they're unable to do that is because they haven't 
and they haven't given them the amount of knowledge and information they need to make those decisions. Right. So it's a training issue. Right. Yeah. So knowledge, you know, will give you that level of trust. For sure. And the people on the ground know more about what they're doing than, you know, the actual leaders do on the day-to-day basis. They, the leaders know, got that big picture view, but on a day-to-day basis, the people actually doing the work will know more about it and know more about the impact of um, you know, putting into place that plan yeah. than the leaders will. Yeah, that, that, that's really insightful, actually. And it's one thing that we find time and time again, um, you know, when we're working with clients in particular, you know, my, my team have got much more of a kind of hands on in terms of, you know, because they're doing the nuts and bolts of the delegations that I've given following the meeting. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in terms of the, the big picture stuff, where we are now, where we're going, it, it's me who has that in my head. Um, and that's where you can bring the strength of the whole team for the benefit of the common good of you and your business and you and you of your clients or customers, depending on what type of work you're involved in, isn't it? It, it is. And I mean, you, you also have to be mindful of what management style to use, depending on what's happening in the business. And I think um, it was very interesting to watch uh, Boris Johnson when the pandemic hit. Right. And at first he was, you know, these are the rules. And we trust you. We trust you to follow these rules. Okay. And as the pandemic worsened, it was like, well, now we've got to say you have got to do this. Yes. So he changed from being a leader, leader. Yeah. To a leader fo- follower situation. Right. right. So when the situation gets worse, sometimes if it's an emergency situation, you have to go into leader follower mode. Okay. So on a day to day basis, you don't need that level of authority. No, it's more about releasing people to to, to self-manage, I guess, and, and, and crack on with things, yeah? Yeah. So, I mean, where, where we are right now, uh, as we do this is, whatever it is, the 16th of March, and, you know, we're hopefully coming out of this particular challenge that we've got at the moment with the whole vaccination programme and all the rest of it, and time will yeah. tell, I guess. But yeah. how, how are you finding businesses are finding things at the moment? I mean, what, what's top of your agenda? Is it is it redundancies? Is it furlough? Is it, what, what is it? Yeah, struggling it's with? The, well, I thought it wasn't going to be furlough, but then they changed the rules and extended the furlough scheme to September. September, yep. So yes, a lot of businesses are still using furlough to the, to the maximum. Right. Um, there's a lot of restructuring going on as well. Yeah. Um, so I'd say restructuring and furlough take up a lot of my time. Okay. Um, yeah. And also, you know, people thinking, well, what are we going to do when we come out of this? Yeah. Are people still going to be working at home? Are they going to be working remotely? What do we need to do? Do we need to change our employment contracts? You know, what kind of arrangements do we need to put in place? What kind of risk assessments do we need to do? And what kind of things do we need to put in place to mitigate any risks if people are going to come back into the office? Okay. How, how, I'm just curious, how do you see things? What, moving forward in terms yeah. of remote working? Sure. I think people will want to, um, I think people will want to do uh, work remotely much more. Right. And I think what will be, um, I think the companies that resist that uh, much less likely to be able to attract staff Ooh, in the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, you know, people have realised, obviously people do want some interaction, mm-hmm. but they've realised on a day-to-day basis, you know, working at home, mm. why would you want to, like, drive into London or, mm. you know, mm. commute wherever um, when you can do your work from home? Yeah. You know, I think you'll find that people do this kind of hybrid kind of working where they perhaps yeah. work, home three or four days and go a day into the office or something like that i can see that making sense i mean certainly you know i mean i run a financial life planning practice and you know we always used to see clients you know in the in the flesh as it were um we've used zoom as an organization for you know probably seven years within the team um but you know on an ad hoc occasion if i got snowed in when i used to live up country um you know it would be a a zoom call or or facetime or something now this is much more of an acceptable form of and even last week i was having a conversation with with, with one of my top corporate clients who's an md and he said to be honest with you carl he said this is good for me 
um, you know, you're there, I'm here, you know, we can crack on, we can do this. If I need 20, 30 minutes of your time to pick up on a particular agenda item, I can do that. It's the way forward. And I said, but I'll still be available to come and see you. He said, I'm running a business in Birmingham. You're in the south coast of Devon. You know, wh why do you need to come up and see me? This is absolutely fine. You know, if we need you, we'll Zoom you, you know. Uh, and, and I guess it's, you know, working with everybody in between that as well, because there'll be people that do want that face to face. So I guess going forward, it's about looking at what's right for the business, what's right for the, the ultimate end user, the customer, the client. So, um, yeah, yeah. interesting, won't it? It will. And I think a lot of um, businesses that have got um, remote staff that travel to different meetings and client, you know, visit different clients and things. If they look at how much time had been spent, you know, in cars doing, yeah. you know, it's just lost time. Yeah. Um, it's worth looking at that and, and just thinking, how could we do this more effectively? Why do you want to get, go back to speak, you know, all your team? spending hours a week like days a week probably between them yeah. in a car non-productive doesn't make sense does it you know I no. mean, certainly for senior leadership teams that you know meet up in london and you know i know quite a number of people who are based here in devon you know they say they're colleagues you know they're up in in, in the north or, or scotland or, or in the midlands and you know they'll fly or, or get a train into london and it, it's like a day stroke two days wiped out of their diary and they said why would yeah. we do that going forward yeah and it's a massive opportunity yeah it's a massive opportunity to do more with the time you've got yeah so what, what do you think are the key if i was to say to you what are the top three things that employers of small medium-sized businesses should be doing right now what would you advise as the kind of top three things that they should be focusing on well, I suppose looking at, um, I, I'd imagine most organisations are looking at costs right now. So I'd say looking at costs, okay. looking at how to maximise productivity, looking at, you know, where you can make cost reductions without impacting on the service or products that you provide. Um, looking at motivation I think also I think mental health is a really um, important thing to focus on uh, because I think um, you know there'll be a lot of people with mental health problems that perhaps haven't manifested themselves yet but I think for the future it's something that people that the organizations will you know there there was a big focus on it before the pandemic but I think even more so now oh for sure I mean my wife Sarah um, she's a doctor in clinical psychology by by background she's no longer in clinical practice but you know is, is obviously trying to understand how you support your teams and you know the well-being of those people um so so that being the case i mean what what do you see as being the the, the tools that business owners need to you know help people with that side of things well again it comes down to communication understanding mental health having training people um, to be mental health champions within right. the organization. So, you know, people might not be comfortable going to the managing director or the manager even, but they might be comfortable talking to a colleague. And if they have a colleague who can understand, um, you know, more about mental health, then they're much more likely to open up. Yeah, that's 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 a really really sort of insightful comment there, and and is it something that you're finding though that the small businesses do? I mean, we we one of my businesses part of a larger organisation called St James's Place, and and you know they're really big on this having mental health champions, and I've got to say that the way they've supported people like me to be able to support my teams over the last um, you know twelve months is just absolutely amazing. But imagine, you know, you're, you're part of a small business where literally you've got five employees or 10 employees or 20 employees. Is that really going to be the case? Are they really going to have mental health champions, do you think? I do think, um, I mean, mental health um, first aider courses um, and there's another, uh, there's a mental health like champion type course. I can't remember. Yes. It's not called mental health champions, but something like that. It's like a bit lower level than the, the first aider type course. They're not that expensive and also it gives the individual you know something um something for their own life as well 
part, you know, not, not just work life, but personal life as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think that small businesses can, it's something that they can invest in. I mean, there are all other sorts of, um, so many online courses and things that people can do um, that don't cost that much. So that, that's a nice little segue there. So online courses, I know this is something <laughs> you're looking into <laughs> doing, Yvonne. So um, tell us a little bit more about what you've got coming up on the, on the horizon a little bit yeah. further down the line. So on the horizon, I've got, well, I have been, um, I've been working on online courses um, for other businesses. I've been commissioned by other businesses to write online courses um, over the past sort of 18 months. And funnily enough, on mental health um, issues as well as sort of other management type issues. Um, and so when the pandemic hit, and I thought, you know, I, my, my work typically is, you know, I've only got you know, five working days, so many hours in the week yeah, yeah. to help businesses on a one-to-one -one basis. So I was thinking, well, how can I get to more people? Yeah. And particularly with the pandemic, made me think more about online courses. So I developed an online learning platform and that is something that I'm working on to develop now. Um, and it, they'll be providing courses on all aspects of HR as sort of a first line help for managers um, where I can't help everyone on a day-to-day -day basis, but I can help much more people if I've provided, um, you know, um, a course with backup and assistance from me in all sorts of aspects of management, managing people, motivation, um, sort of every aspect really of running a business. That sounds fantastic. And uh, obviously that sounds like a huge project. When, when yeah. is that likely to be surfacing, do you think, Yvonne? It should be. <laughs> a lot of the courses are ready to go online. I just need um, to sort out like the technical aspect of it and they should be online quite soon. Oh, well, watch this space then, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, in terms of if people want to kind of reach out, uh, having watched this today, if they think, well, actually, you know, I want to talk to Yvonne about all things HR or just a, one or two things about HR, how, how would people sort of connect with you? What's the best way to do that, Yvonne? Um, well, my email is Yvonne at YvonneHardiman.co.uk. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, so you can find me on LinkedIn, Yvonne Hardiman on LinkedIn. I'm on most social uh, media platforms, I'm on Twitter as well. But probably the best way to get hold of me in the first instance is um, by email. Okay, cool. And now, now I'm in Devon, and now you're not in Devon, are you? T tell everyone um, where you're from. I'm in Northamptonshire. It almost doesn't matter anymore, does it? It doesn't. No, which, <laughs> which was exactly my point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm in Northamptonshire, just um, just north of Milton Keynes. So my, my next question was, bearing that in mind, are you able to work with, with everybody pretty much anywhere within the UK? Yeah, well, um, obviously HR is based on employment law. Yep. And so the employment law that I specialise in is the... Um, the law of England and Wales. So anyone in England and Wales, I can help with um, sort of HR and employment law related issues. Fantastic. Apologies if you're watching this north of the border, but it is a different <laughs> set of rules. I know that sometimes I get uh, caught out by that and I have to go and look at our technicians go, tell me about the, the Scottish law. Uh, but um, that, that's kind of good to know. Well, well, well I mean, finally, are, are there any are there any other things that you think we should be sort of talking about, Yvonne? Anything we've not unpacked in this little sort of introduction? Uh, yeah, I think another uh, major area um, for all businesses, and they're in a, a really good position to sort of kind of help change, and that's inequality and diversity. Okay. And that's going to be one of my first courses, actually. Um, so it's... Um, it's about you know the law in you know the equality laws, but it's also about things like um, unconscious bias, yeah, and um, and raising awareness of that within businesses, which can have a massive impact. So you know businesses are in the biggest um, the biggest influences on how people can um, change their behaviour. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us more about that. You know, give give us a couple more minutes on that. Um, 
Well, obviously, there's been a lot of interest in that um, in the past 12 months, particularly yeah. on racial diversity. Sure. I mean, there's all aspects of diversity. Um, and it's quite hard to spot and deal with in businesses, actually. And uh, people don't, you know, people might make um, comments. So it's very easy to deal with, um, um, you know, those kind of issues if somebody does something that's obviously racist or sexist or whatever. But sometimes people do something called microaggressions, right. which are just comments that are made that you wouldn't even think might be offensive to somebody. And it's only really the person on the receiving end that might um, feel that. And people around them might not have realised it had been offensive. So it's raising right. people's awareness of of the kind of things that might be offensive to people and kind of stamping it out at that really sort of lower level. And it's hard, it's very hard to get people to, you know, nobody wants to think they're racist or, mm. you know, they wouldn't treat people equally. Mm. Um, and they, and they, especially when they don't intend to. So mm. it's quite hard for people to accept that something they've done might sort of you know be a be um against diversity right right I, so I that's that's kind of what that's the kind of what the training would be about and the yeah. awareness training yeah uh, for me when i'm when i talk to you and and, and i know another, another couple of employment lawyers as well and um you know just listening to to things that people talk about i think goodness me you know as a as a a business owner it's almost like this minefield these days that you're walking through and you, you you don't you don't want to either intentionally or unintentionally sort of step on any of these sort of landmines which is why I kind of say to people you know you need to get proper advice you know qualified advice and that's why I started off with your credentials at the beginning uh, of this call because um you know it's like that there are a number of people out there in my world, for example, there's a lot of people out there who are, who are will writers and they, they're, they're dealing with, you know, someone's entire wealth when they die, you know, so it's a legal document that deals with everything that the person owns in the whole wide world. Yeah, actually the vast majority of will writers are unqualified and I, I just don't get that. How can it be a self-regulatory, you know, organization or, or profession, you know, um, you know, if you're if you're a step qualified lawyer or a step qualified will writer, you've had to go through a huge amount of. You'll appreciate having worked in a law firm. You know. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Amount, you know, <laughs> you know. I know all about step. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and yet, there's people out there roaming the country. You know, dealing with people's <laughs> estates. You think, well, that's brilliant. I, I just don't, yeah. don't quite understand that myself. You know, I'm chartered, I'm certified, yeah. and a published author. And you think, goodness me. Um, and I still, it still makes me realise how little I actually know, even after 35 years of doing what I do. So I would say to people, if you've got these issues, then get some qualified advice, you know, talk yeah. to somebody like Yvonne. Yeah. And don't brush them under the carpet, because that's no. what a lot of people tend to do. And then invariably they come back later on. Yeah. And they're harder to deal with then. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Yvonne, it's been great talking to you this afternoon. Thank you for sharing your time with us. I know you're exceedingly busy at the moment, so thanks for being able to do that. Um, so uh, just give a shout out for your email address if people want to sort of get in contact with you again. Yeah, so it's Yvonne at YvonneHardiman.co.uk. Brilliant. OK, well, uh, thanks for sharing your pearls of wisdom. Do you like the pun there, your pearls of wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> very um, good Carl. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody watching this if, if you've gone through redundancy or indeed you're facing a new uh, chapter in your life then um you know i was an author or still am the author of of this book called dream it plan it live it which kind of helps people engineer a, a plan for their life really and i'm a firm believer and i know we've talked about this before yvonne that out of adversity comes opportunity doesn't it it's yes, about it having does. life after retirement or you know life after redundancy uh, i know is dear, near and dear to your heart as well so if, yeah. if anybody is facing those challenges as part of my give back really in this pandemic time if you go to dreamitplanetliveitbook.com forward slash offer 
Um, you can get a copy of this book for literally just a pound uh, on, on that platform there. Um, it's actually retailing on Amazon at £10.99, but you can get a copy of the book for a pound. So if you're finding yourself that you're faced with a new journey in life and you'd like to construct your life plan going forward, have a look at the book. Hope it helps. But um, equally, you know, Yvonne's here. If you'd like to sort of reach out to her and, uh, you know, in any way, shape or form, then uh, please do so. But um any final words of wisdom from you, Yvonne? Gosh, you put me on the spot there. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your number one tip for business owners? Communicate, communicate, communicate. There we go. We've got I'm managing people. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks for joining us, Yvonne. All right. Good to see you. Thanks very care, much, Carl. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Bye.